So this is really the definition of a hard act to follow. Um, you're probably all stuffed with uh, the input of Vanessa, so um, I hope you <laughs> enjoy my talk as well and get all the information I wanted to um, give you. Uh, I'm just curious, um, how many researchers are left in the room? Like maybe we have some gem champions here already. <laughs> no one? Yeah, no, just, just, okay, that's good. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, you're the champions already, so that doesn't count really, but uh, how many librarians are here? Okay, that's, yeah, 50% maybe. I've seen some policy makers, so that's probably the crowd. I was kind of nervous um, bef uh, before this talk because I didn't know who I'm going to talk to today. Um, but let's see how it goes. So, uh, yeah, I'm from the University of Zurich, and we are part of the Open Air Project. It, it has nothing to do with uh, concerts. It's, uh, it's about an open access infrastructure for research in Europe. Um, I was kind of nervous, too, uh, before this talk, because I, I kind of had a hard time to limit myself to open access, because since the Berlin Declaration is kind of clear, open access is, is more than just two publications. It, it has to include data and, and other research output. So the research in open air does mean a lot more than just open access. Uh, in open air itself, uh, we are um, just one of around 50 partners. We are a national open access desk for Switzerland. So uh, what we do, we support um, EU funded project, projects in Switzerland uh, with their open access mandate in Horizon 2020 and uh, the uh, open data pilot in Horizon 2020. Uh, open Air exists uh, a long time. Um, actually, it's in operation since two, 2010, uh, but it was um, started in 2009. Okay, 1st of December 2009. So it's a really old project, um, but we um, kind of got hard wired into the workflow of the European Commission and the reporting of uh, all the European funded projects. So uh, this is a big success. And we are happy as a, as a network of a lot of experts to contribute um, to the, yeah, let's say, implementation of open access and, and open science. I'm kind of glad for your definition of open science because now I don't have to uh, explain that too much. Um, so we, we are kind of a um, two-faced um, network. Like we have uh, the human component to it. So we are just um, a bunch of, of people who, who try to make open access happen. Like a lot of members uh, are, part, are part of Spark Europe as well. Uh, funny enough, uh, the U University of Zurich is not, although we um, try to um, implement open access uh, early on. Uh, but I talked with Vanessa, so we might join o uh, Spark uh, in the future. Uh, and on the other side is the digital network, the research infrastructure. Uh, I'm going to show you um, on another slide what this really means. Uh, we basically just collect publications and link those publications to projects um, so that we can do something with this information in our big information pool. Um, of course, uh, we, we try to speak to all stakeholders. So we are not just supporting researchers, but we try to speak to policymakers. Um, we try to um, cooperate with funders, other funders in Europe. And uh, we have a lot of uh, very interesting research projects going on who text and data mine, for example, our database uh, to find out more about uh, different topics that is hidden in uh, different, uh, many different papers, for example. I only have 50 minutes and we are uh, 20 minutes late, so I cannot really tell you all what we are doing, but um, at least some, some inter interesting um, facts and funny bits. Um, so one of the, the major uh, features uh, we have in open air uh, since a couple of years now is the fact that we um, are um, a very important part of the reporting process for European projects. Um, so when uh, a publication, for example, is in an open access repository across Europe, uh, uh, open Air is going to harvest this information and is going to report this information connected with the project information to CORDIS and the participant portal, uh, which is the grant management service of the European Commission, 
uh, so that you don't have to collect uh, your publications for your project, but this is done automatically. So this is um, kind of a nice to have feature for a lot of researchers. Um, <coughs> And, and open air is, is really uh, in, in the center of this service. Um, and of course, um, the, the second big thing is Zenodo. I, I guess most of uh, the people know it here. It's very successful in Switzerland. Um, for example, the biggest contributor to Zenodo is, uh, uh, is a non-for-profit organization, Platzi. Um, they contribute a lot of pictures and texts in their um, biodiversity literature repository, which is a community in Sinodo. Uh, and other institutions, like for example, uh, educational colleges in Luzerne and uh, even in Zurich, um, they have a repository in Sinodo or they're thinking about just creating an open access repository, institutional repository in Sinodo. Um, one of the major reasons uh, probably is because it's very simple um, it, it seems to be very safe. I think in the case of Switzerland, um, the advantage is that um, it feels like CERN is in Switzerland, uh, and it's reliable. Um, so um, I, I think that's why it is so successful here, at least. Um, I don't know, is anybody here who has never heard of Zenodo yet? Uh, I think it's very well known. Okay, so I don't have to explain you all the features here. So, apart from, from all those different um, uh, endeavors uh, in the realm of open access, um, I just want to point out maybe one thing we are trying to do in the next phase of open air, which is open air advance. So we are going to stay until the end of Horizon 2020 and help researchers uh, and cooperate with um, funders. And uh, this morning, for example, we had a meeting with um, colleagues um, mainly repository managers and librarians who are thinking about um, monitoring open access and how this could be done in the future. Uh, and and OpenAir is, is an entity who really tries to set up standards so that we um, have uh, a common a harmonization and a common standard all across uh, Euro uh, European countries. Uh, so I'm quite happy to, to be in this group. Um, and uh, we are going to, of course, um, cooperate with the Swiss National Science Foundation in this. Um, and this is something that is, of course, as you heard um, today, very important for the national open access strategy to know how much open access uh, we put out, uh, how much is produced, and what, how we can improve it. Like, then we can compare the different universities uh, we heard today that this might be a problem because some universities maybe don't want to have this uh, measurement of, of open access performance. Um, so it's going to be interesting. Uh, let's see what happens in the future. Um, and of course, with all those different services, we are part of the um, um, open science cloud in the future. I cannot really tell you how this is going to look like. I, don't, I have no clue uh, who actually knows at the moment, but uh, we are at least going to be part of it. Um, apart from the technical infrastructure and the harmonization of standards, um, and I have to say that as a node, as National Open Access Desk, uh, what we want to focus in the next uh, three years is, is training in uh, open science. Um, what we have already is this help desk system, so uh, researchers from different countries can come to us and ask for help and support for uh, publishing in open access uh, or putting their research data in uh, online repositories. Uh, we have a little bit of training. We have a lot of webinars so far. We're going to do a lot of workshops uh, in the next couple of years. Um, of course, there are resources online, guidelines uh, for repository managers um, to take part in this um, research infrastructure. The resources for copyright issues and um, for researchers, um, Horizon 2020 fact sheets. Uh, legal consultation is another uh, big issue because many researchers uh, um, who are confronted with the fact that they have to share their research data are not really um, are confident to put out all their data because uh, it's um, not very easy to define um, what is sensitive and what is not sensitive, uh, what can be text and data mined and what not. 
we're not really a legal advisor, but at least we can point to some um, regulations in different countries. Uh, what I heard so far is in Switzerland, the, the text and data mining um, policy and the uh, revision of the copyright laws is very um, in favor of text and data mining. So that's, that's good news. So this is going to be interesting. Um, how many um, text and, and data mining scientists will move to Switzerland in order to be able to do it actually. Uh, and uh, the open air portal and um, database is, is basically uh, a very good uh, pool of information to do text and data mining of all the research that is coming out uh, in Europe. Uh, so my next, or my next three slides are going to be uh, about uh, um, the training aspect because this is really uh, an interesting Thing, and I would love to connect with you uh, in the libraries um, to coordinate this uh, in, in the future uh, because I, I guess there, there will be a lot of questions uh, concerning open access. We heard the uh, SNSF is, is pushing for open access uh, and for open research data. So there, there will be a lot of um, yeah, support needed uh, by researchers who want to know what to do, how to do it. Um, so this is something we cannot really do alone. Uh, we are going to cooperate with a lot of different projects, of course, uh, on the European level, especially with uh, FOSTER, a project that um, is collecting um, yeah, training material. So this is a good source of, of information and, and other and bigger research infrastructures um, so that we um, can support, support a broad range of, of, um, of questions and, and projects. Um, I'm going to skip this in, in order to save some time. So as you can see, see here on this slide, um, like we are a really a big project and so this is going to result in a, in a big effort in, in, in training uh, in open access and in open science. Uh, and I, I think it's really necessary because um, like most researchers are, are very much in favor for open, everything that's open but um, when you have to do it yourself, it, it gets kind of complicated. When it stands in, in the way of your career, for example, we heard that today already. Um, uh, in the realm of open science, it gets even more complicated and uh, that's what I'm more concerned with at the moment. So I, I'd like to talk about that a little bit more. Um, I would like to actually, but I can't. Um, so what we think is that uh, training and um, Raising awareness will help a lot to overcome those those obstacles and to change the culture. Uh, open has, has always been a project to kind of ease the pain for researchers to do open access or open science, to just uh, put in place an infrastructure that, where they can put their, their articles or their data and to give enough support for them uh, to be convinced that this is a good thing. Um, it's not easy to do that, uh, but we hope with um, a lot of the, those awareness trainings we can move things a little bit forward. Of course, it's, it's very um, discipline specific. We are very well aware of that, so we're going to uh, really focus on different uh, research fields in order to do this. Some fields are uh, much further ahead than others. Uh, I wouldn't say that humanities is so way back actually uh, in, in open access. Um, some are really very much in favor for that, but it really, really depends on the specific field. So um, it's going to be an interesting episode in, in, in open air. Um, what we also try to do is, of course, uh, be um, an important part in the data lifecycle management uh, project that's more for open science. So how to share your data, basically. Um, there's going to be uh, the next Swiss Research Data Management Day uh, next year in June. So if you're interested, um, save the date, um, June 12th. Um, I know this, somehow it's, it feels a little bit strange when, when we are talking about um, uh, open science, uh, that it is so important and, and open research data, while open access is not fully impl implemented yet. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, it's a really actual topic and, and we, we, we try to um, support um, the national efforts here on the Swiss level. Um, so that's all from me, so I saved some time. So I guess there might be a lot of questions. Um, 
I would have loved to have more time to present all of open air, which is because it's 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 a very ambitious um, project actually. Um, but um, I couldn't probably tell this in in an hour or so. So if you have questions, just just call me, uh, send me an email, check out the open air website, get in touch. I would love to, um, like from my Belgian. Uh, colleagues here, um, you have uh, very nice, we have very nice colleagues there. Um, I guess you know them, Emily and Inge, so. <laughs> so thank you so much. Um.